All right, fig growers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are reviewing a new fig variety that I've never covered before called Eskia Black from the USDA. And it's a long awaited variety that I've been dying to properly evaluate and get a good handle on uh, because it is really one of the best tasting fig varieties that you can grow. I definitely got an idea and confirmed that for myself of that fact last year. But I really didn't get many figs to speak of that could hold up to my humid weather. This is a very problematic variety for a lot of people, but because it is so tasty, a lot of people have been trying to grow it for a long time. And some people have really uh, done a decent job at documenting this. In fact, there is a grower uh, named uh, New England Gardener. I don't know if you guys have seen some of his videos, but he was one of the first guys that inspired me to start a YouTube channel uh, revolving around figs. And uh, this was one of his favorites. This and Black Madeira, he eventually realized um, that were some that he kept around for, I think, a long time. I'm not sure if he's still growing figs or if he still has this fig. But there were some reviews of this that I was just like, wow. Couldn't believe um, you know, how good some of the figs looked. So it's been a long time coming. I've been trying to get this fig healthy and established because that's the problem with it, is that not only does it not do well, or that well, I should say, to our moisture, it tends to split uh, a little bit. Um, but it's also really affected with the fig mosaic virus. And there's been a couple of strains of it that have come from the USDA um, that inevitably became healthier. Uh, there's one that uh, a grower named Herman or Vasile in New Jersey uh, eventually kind of rejuvenation pruned it after a number of years. It became healthy and then almost all of the uh, really all of the cuttings that hobbyist growers have and trees that hobbyist growers have come from pretty much his tree. Because the USDA's tree was just so riddled with the virus, a lot of the varieties there ended up getting so infected, like Black Madeira is another one, some of the Col de Doms, um, Barna Soat is another one that I recently uh, am growing and evaluating. Um, I'm sure there's others that I'm not thinking of, but this one here definitely got it the worst. It just has so much of this virus. Um, and maybe it's other viruses or diseases uh, that are not even just fig mosaic virus. There are others that um, are infecting this tree. Uh, but over time, I have taken a similar approach. I planted some in the ground and tried to rejuvenation prune them and then what the inevitable goal is, because it's so hard to evaluate this tree when it's so heavily infected. You can't evaluate the productivity, you can't evaluate the growth, you can't even evaluate the fruit sometimes. When it's so infected like this, it just doesn't show any of the characteristics that it should. And you know it should. Um, so you may think one thing about a variety and then when it becomes healthier, it's totally different. Or if it's healthy and then becomes sick with the virus, it just doesn't show the same characteristics. Um, and so for that, I've never, I haven't really wanted to make a, a variety review of this or was not really able to until this year. I find that there's definitely three branches on this tree <laughs> that are healthy. I mean, you saw the productivity of these branches and what the potential is of this tree, but this portion of the tree, both of these two branches, absolutely not, would not fly. This is just really kind of sad, actually, uh, this part of the tree. So what you do is to solve this problem, again, is rejuvenation pruning, just pruning out some of that bad growth, pruning out the growth that you know, as I said, it has a different level of the virus. Um, now you can rejuvenation prune them and chop them all the way down to the base, which I find to be even better, um, which I do in the ground. And I have actually a quite almost perfect, perfectly healthy Ishia black in the ground now. 
So that's amazing. I'm hoping next year, because what we're going to do is finally it's healthy, I would like to propagate something from that to grow one in a container. Um, maybe I'll do that next year. Maybe I'll take a cutting if, if there is any and, and try to root them. But I also am going to bend it over, protect it, and then that way next season it'll have survived and be able to grow from that healthy base. And that's what you want for any tree. Unfortunately, this tree here is grafted, and so you can't rejuvenation prune it to as much as I'd like to because it's on a rootstock. Now, I guess I could really hack it and hopefully get a healthy tree out of it. But when you graft figs, I've learned, you have to have a healthy rootstock. You can't just have a healthy top. You, can't have, you have to have both, a healthy scion and a healthy rootstock. And if you don't have either one of those, don't do it. So nonetheless, it's finally kind of through the process of me just pruning out some of this bad stuff, it's producing a lot of fruit. I think I had a tree last year I got rid of that uh, wasn't as healthy, but it was still respectable enough, I think, for someone to want to grow it. And uh, I think I may have sold that tree. I may have sold some cuttings last year. But finally, I think going forward, we're getting to the point where we're going to have some healthy plant material, like really healthy plant material, at least to the point where I think it's, uh, it's hard to get um, a source of it that maybe is healthier uh, because I think there probably always will be a problem with this fig. Uh, but you want to try to make it as healthy as possible. And that's what that tree in the ground I have over there is looking like right now. Uh, it's producing figs. It's growing almost spotless new leaves. Um, and eventually it, that's just only going to get better and better and better every year. So anyway, long spiel, but we finally have a fig. Whoop. And it looks pretty good. It's got a lot of that pigmentation. It's quite a dark red fig on the inside. It's blue on the outside. Uh, one of the few blue figs. I've had it in the fridge for about a day. So that's kind of why it looks uh, a bit strange. They feel very light, actually. They don't feel very dense. They don't feel very sticky either. Um, strange. But anyway, so that's, that's it. It's got a nice shape. Believe it or not, it's actually a productive fig if it's healthy. It's mid-season. Um, it does, definitely doesn't ripen too late. Um, it's ripening right right now is when all of them are ripening uh, that ripen mid season. Um, let's try it. Oh man! Wow. Hmm. Nice texture, and it's it's like a got a really nice sweetness to it. It's almost like a sugar fig, but there is a nice berry component. Not a ton of berry, actually. I was surprised. I would have thought there would have been more berry. I don't recall last year if there was much berry out of this. That's exceptional, though. You know, a lot of people compare this fig to Vila de Bordeaux. Um, and I know it's not Vila de Bordeaux, but it's not that far off, believe it or not, in terms of the, the eating experience. And um, it's like a slightly better Vila de Bordeaux. But if you got Vila de Bordeaux, I'm not sure it's worth all this hassle. And also this one splits quite a bit more. So anyway, I'd be very interested to see how this one keeps ripening. And we've got really warm weather. It's been relatively dry. I mean, we had a lot of rain last night, but I picked that fig before the rain. And as long as I keep doing that, uh, I'm curious to see how this ends up. And I will probably leave some on. Uh, in the rain and see how it behaves. Even the splitting and the rain resistance and all that other stuff.
can be affected by the virus. So now it's a healthier, slightly healthier tree than last year. And we'll see how it, how it turns out. It's still, you can tell, it's still low, needs help. Even though the productivity's there, the leaves are just so small. Um, the leaves are, are absolutely healthier for sure. There's a lot less of that virus, but yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you for the next one, all right? Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Take care.